first music instrument was uh, drums, always drums. Uh, I've been playing drums ever since I can remember. My father was a jazz piano player, so I always grew up around jazz musicians and jam sessions, what have you. Um, born and raised in Los Angeles, so uh, ever since I can remember, I was beating on, beating on things, sofa, you know, table, and at some point my parents decided we need to give them some drumsticks. Well, I mean, I'm a child of the 70s, so uh, I grew up when elementary school still had school orchestras, uh, junior high school had a jazz band, if you can believe that, and uh, high school had a jazz band and a stage band, and I played in a marching band. Uh, I started studying privately when I was 15, 14, actually. And uh, although I wasn't serious about practicing, uh, I've been playing since I was maybe five. But uh, once I started studying privately, I wasn't really serious about practicing, so my father stopped getting me private lessons. Uh, and then a year later, I entered high school, and I found out I was the worst drummer in the school, which, uh, you know, because of my hurt ego, I became serious about practicing and drum technique and what have you. Um, well, my father was my, he introduced me to the music. So he's my most important uh, teacher, uh, mentor, Willie Jones, Willie Jones II. Um, so he's my first. Uh, after that, uh, my high school band director, David Sears, he really got me uh, to take music seriously. And also, after I graduated from high school, um, I moved on to uh, CalArts, where I went to school for two years. And there I studied with Tootie Heath. He was my teacher for two years. And, and also, I had uh, James Newton, was one of my music teachers. And he was also a mentor. Um, and also had the, the privilege of playing with him in his band while I was in school. Uh, um, yeah, mentors, uh, Billy Higgins. While I was a student at CalArts, um, Billy Higgins p played a very important part in my life, becoming a mentor, and uh, his performing arts space, the World Stage, which is located in the Lamert Park area of Los Angeles, very important place for musicians, uh, poets, dancers, vocalists, what have you. Um, they had jam sessions every week. And everybody was, was telling me that you should go down there, sit in. And once I did, I met a lot of other young jazz musicians uh, who were serious about playing straight ahead jazz, which was not uh, fashionable to do at that time in LA. So, uh, and Billy, he took me under his wing. Uh, I never really studied with him. I was studying with Tootie Heath in school, but, uh, Billy was the one, he let me watch him practice, which was a lesson in itself. And um, eventually he started recommending me for gigs, gigs that he couldn't make. I started subbing for him. So that was sort of my introduction into working professionally as a, as a jazz musician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so early? Yeah, uh, well, after my first pay gig was, well, technically, you know, my first pay gig would, would be a gig I did with my father uh, when I was in high school. He would let me play gigs with him when technically I really wasn't ready, but you know, he would let me play with him and uh, pay me some money. But technically, exactly, very little. Uh, but the gigs that I got on my own, um, I guess when I was about 19, 20, um, I started playing with certain vocalists, a lot of vocalists in Los Angeles. Uh, in the 80s and, and now, I think. But anyway, a lot of vocalists who were doing workshops, you know, they, they would call me to play with them. And it's hard to say the first gig, but it was one of the first gigs I was doing at that time when I was about 19 or 20, uh, where on my own, they would hire me to play with them, you know. Uh, but by the time I got to Cal Arts, though, uh, Billy Higgins had started spreading my name and 
I started playing with a group called Black Note, which is a group that basically developed out of Billy Higgins' workshop, The World Stage. So my name sort of got around locally, and uh, I started working with different people like James Newton, who was my teacher at CalArts, Billy Childs, uh, the Clayton brothers started calling me, who were also on the, on the cruise, um, subbing for Jeff Hamilton. So, uh, yeah, that was my beginning of professionally working, professionally working as a musician. I mean, uh, L.A. was good to me, so I always knew that New York was the jazz capital, but I worked a lot, uh, f if for no other reason that there weren't really any other young jazz drummers uh, playing straight ahead jazz at that level, you know. Um, so Billy Higgins, Joe LaBarber, uh, Jeff Hamilton, and there's another drummer, Ralph Penland, from L.A., uh, a lot of times when those guys couldn't, those were like the main, Roy McCurdy also. If those guys couldn't make a gig, uh, yeah, they called me a, a lot of the time. So, so I worked a lot in L.A., but um, it was always in the back of my mind to eventually move to New York. And a lot of the musicians like Billy Higgins and uh, Tootie Heath, they were always telling me, you, you should go to New York eventually. So, um, but I was still in school and... Uh, I had more time to, to grow and mature in Los Angeles before I made the trip to, the, to New York. No, there wasn't an adjustment period. The first week I moved to New York, I was working at the Blue Note that week with Arturo Sandoval. So, like, I, I came there with it. I moved to New York with a gig. I was already working. Like, Arturo Sandoval, let me back up. The first touring gig I got was Arturo Sandoval. Um, his, his regular drummer was my classmate at CalArts, um, Eron Serfati, great Latin drummer. He was my, my, my classmate and he was also Arturo's drummer, so he got another tour, another gigs, and, and needed us a sub for like three weeks. So that was my introduction to playing with Arturo, and I was still in school, uh, living in L.A. So. Uh, Fast forward three years, three or four years, when I moved, by the time I was moving to New York, I was Arturo's regular drummer. And that week that we were playing at the Blue Note in New York, uh, I chose to make that week, I'm moving to New York. So, uh, so the adjustment was, was rather easy for me. I was uh, playing with Arturo Sandoval. I had started making some gigs with Roy Hargrove. Um, and a couple of months later, I started playing with Horace Silver and recording with him. So looking back on it, the adjustment was easy, but that's not, that wasn't my, my frame of mind when I was actually in the transition of, of moving. You know, the weeks leading up to it, I was, of course, I was nervous and how am I going to transport my drums and stuff like that. But as soon as I got there, everything worked out smoothly. Hi, I'm Willie Jones III. For more videos, go to jazztimes.com.